Welcome to Voice Rising with Kara Johnstad. Enjoy weekly conversations with leading luminaries, pioneering visionaries, singers, poets, musicians, and sound healers as we explore the profound role our voice plays on the path to self-realization and global enlightenment. The internationally acclaimed singer, composer, author, healer, recording artist, voice expert, creator of Voice Your Essence, and founder of the School of Voice, Kara Johnstad uses her extraordinary spiritual gifts to empower others. Everything in this world vibrates. Everything has a frequency. A pioneer in the field of voice work and transformational songwriting. Her breakthrough methods are helping thousands of people worldwide fine-tune their body-mind-spirit system and unlock the energetic frequencies of limitless creativity, health, and abundance. Share your voice. Ask your questions. Join in the conversation. Receive life-changing, positive transformation and rise together to create a sound world. And here's your host, Kara Johnstad. Welcome, everybody, to the show today. Today, it is all about embracing the journey of aging. With extended longevity comes the opportunity for extended personal growth and spiritual development. And today in studio, I am with author Connie Zweig, and together we're going to explore the voice of the elder. How can we attune with our soul's longing? How can we reclaim our creativity and emerge in our later years with more vitality and purpose? Connie Zweig is a retired psychotherapist, former executive editor at Jeremy P. Tarcher Publishing, and contributor to the LA Times, and she is best known as the shadow expert. So welcome, Connie, to Voice Rising. Thank you, Cara. Thank you for the opportunity. You're welcome. You have a new book out there, a very beautiful and empowering book. It's called The Inner Work of Age, Shifting from Role to Soul, and it reminds all of us that it's up to us not merely to grow old, but to grow whole. So when did you feel that nudge to write the inner work of age, shifting from role to soul? <laughs> um, yes, it is a nudge. It's kind of a call, and it's kind of a longing, like you just mm-hmm. referred to there, which I wrote about. What happened was, um, as I began to enter my late 60s and think about retiring from my clinical practice as a therapist after 30 years, I noticed that I started to feel disoriented. Mm -hmm. And I started to ask very similar sort of existential questions that we ask at midlife, typically. Who am I? You know, what is Mm -hmm. my purpose now? What is my calling? What is this stage of life about? And what is most important to me? And so I went looking into the literature, into the books and research to see if there was any depth psychology about aging. And by that I mean if anybody was exploring our unconscious process. Mm -hmm. So when you said I'm known as the shadow expert, I was trained in my clinical work to orient to the unconscious, which Mm -hmm. Carl Jung called the shadow. And I wrote some popular books, Meeting the Shadow, Romancing the Shadow, and really kind of developed that as my expertise. So I was looking for that in the context of late life. And I was astonished to find there was nothing There was not one book that was exploring aging past midlife in the context of what is going on in the unconscious. Mm -hmm. What, what What are the images and dreams and fears about aging that are outside of our awareness that we're not, that we're just not conscious of? And how is that shaping our experience of growing older? And so that's when I kind of got the nudge that there might be another book for me to write about meeting the shadows of age. Yeah, I I have to say that I remember my mother, who's uh, 
is 82 years old, so the book is is connecting us in the moment. I just ordered her a copy. Um, she, oh. used say, she used to say to me that there was an old radio show that said, The Shadow Knows. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> and it's, That's right. It, it just seems like the the shadow work is so important for all of us. But what I enjoyed about the book, or it's not even an an enjoy, it's a remembrance that when we, maybe you can explain, it's not only the unconscious. You talked a lot about, you know, we come again with this very pure essence, this strong voice. This is how I understood it. And then at some point we start splitting off because other voices might be telling us, you know, I want you to sit still, I want you to be really polite, I want you to do this. And so these these parts of us that are not so um, accepted or juicy, maybe are a little bit of our anger side, or maybe are, you know, sticking out our tongue while we're writing uh, something important, suddenly that's not acceptable, that they get hidden, or they get put aside. But But for us to come into this full, vibrant energy, we have to start embracing all parts of who we are. Is that? Did I understand that correctly? Um, yes. So there's a kind of inevitable developmental process that happens to all of us humans mm-hmm. when we're kids and we're beginning very early to learn right from wrong, to learn mm-hmm. what wins us love and approval and what wins us Um, punishment or shame or criticism, what happens is the um, feelings and attitudes and behaviors that result in love form our conscious ego. Mm -hmm. So if our parents need us to be polite or quiet or kind or giving, collaborative, or whatever the qualities are, we develop this conscious personality And the other traits that are disapproved of get banished into the shadow. Mm -hmm. In psychology, we call that repression. Mm -hmm. They get repressed into the unconscious mind. And this is all in the, in our early years, a kind of a necessary process because when we, when, if it's not safe for us to be angry, when we're five years old or 10 years old, then we learn not to be angry. And that, Mm -hmm. that what I call shadow character protects us from the consequences perhaps of a dangerous parent or teacher or clergy person. So initially when we form a shadow, it protects us. But then what happens as we move through the lifespan, maybe in adolescence, that anger starts to erupt uh, in dangerous ways, in ways that are rebellious, in ways that are um, unsafe and unrelated. And then when we're adults and we want to establish an intimate relationship, that we don't have access to that anger. And we can't Mm -hmm. really have intimacy without knowing when we're angry and knowing how to safely express it and take responsibility for it. So the protector then becomes the saboteur. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, when Jung and Freud and 100 years ago in the early days of psychology, when they were describing the unconscious, they were, they believed initially that only negative, quote, quote, negative things could go into the shadow. So Mm -hmm. for Freud, it was all about sex and power. Mm -hmm. And what Jung really discovered was that Anything at all can be repressed. Anything. So if your parents tell you that it's trivial for you to learn how to paint or draw, but you have a really creative talent, then that talent gets buried in the shadow. Mm -hmm. Or you have an athletic gift, but that's Mm -hmm. not important to your parents and they don't want to invest in it. That gets buried in the shadow. So it's right. not only our it's not only our difficult emotions, but it's also our gifts and talents. And one of the really um, precious opportunities now of our longevity is to be able to reclaim 
some of those lost gifts and dreams and aspirations that were sacrificed into the shadow earlier in our lives. My literary I, agent, yeah. No, and I'm Go sure ahead. because I have, you know, voice clients that come to me and literally, I, I have, for example, one woman who always dreamed of being a singer. She, she studied but then ended up going into, you know, a business, a very, you know, management position in business and she keeps on saying to me and she's going to be turning 70 if i could come back or if i had one more life i would i would study music and i said but you know you can have 30 40 i mean who knows like with the newest science you know how long we can live we don't know but why not embrace it now and i think that's what you're saying is that this this looking at the shadow and this embracing to, to alleviate the shame and the guilt and to work through that, it's going to set so much energy free because it's going to integrate us to what we said, not growing old, we're growing whole. Because all of these pieces are going to be like a magical jigsaw puzzle that are going to come back together. Yes, and there's a deeper level for mm -hmm. your voice client, which is, if I don't do this, will I die with regret? Yeah. And I think that question, when we can accept our mortality, you know, we're no longer in denial of it, and we accept that we have limited time now, mm -hmm. whether it's one decade or two decades or three decades, we still lived a lot longer than we're going to live forward. And we yeah. ask that question about regret at death, it puts everything into perspective. And if that's the case for your client, that could fuel her to do yeah. something now in the context of music. And it may not be, you know, the, the earlier dream of life, of becoming a professional musician. It may just mean learning to sing or learning an instrument and doing it for herself. Right, which comes, again, to the idea of honoring self-worth, self-acceptance, honoring this life we've been given, right? I think uh, you, you were talking about repression, and I just had to think about the huge, high, the, the high numbers of depression um, in the Western world, especially where there are no you know, big rituals of dancing and singing, et cetera. And is that your experience also, is that when we repress our emotions and don't express our emotions, that that things just start getting darker or sadder? Or is it a little bit more complex than that? Well, I think there are a lot of reasons for this epidemic of depression. It's now... Mm -hmm. um, it's now very high in young people because of the climate crisis. Yes. It's um, very high in older adults now, as well as substance abuse, because, and it was exacerbated by the pandemic and the isolation that created. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there are many reasons, and some of, the, some of them are um, related to what you're saying, which is that People have, the older adults, many of them, have not done their emotional repair work. Mm -hmm. So they haven't had the support or the means to um, clear things up with loved ones and give and receive forgiveness and mm -hmm. feel at peace with their relationships. Um, some of them haven't done inner work to really deepen their own self-knowledge and, you know, uncover who they are at many different levels. Some of them don't have a spiritual orientation of any kind, a connection to something larger than the ego. And so, yeah. you know, if you experience life as kind of a isolated, separate little atom, um, it's very, it can be very painful. It can be very um, lonely. And there's an epidemic of loneliness among older adults. But there's also a lot of social context for this, Kara. Like, you know, our culture is really ageist. Mm -hmm. And the collective ageism is very hard on people. There's yeah. forced retirement and ageism in the workplace. 
There's ageist messaging from the media and TV commercials about, you know, mm-hmm. anti-aging products all the time. And there's no kind of rite of passage to honor what it means to become an elder. And so people don't have the self-acceptance you're talking about. The culture doesn't even have, have, a, have ways to support that, for, to help people to cultivate that. So I think there are many sort of layers of reasons for the depression in different age groups now. Mm-hmm. Um, and some are circumstantial, financial and health issues. Um, and family issues and marital issues. You know, um, many, uh, you know, I've had, I actually had two very close friends die while I was writing the book. So mm-hmm. people have many different reasons for feeling down. What I'm suggesting is that there's a way to take advantage of these years and the opportunities that are here for us. They, these opportunities are not named in our culture. Nobody teaches us this. I'm, I'm, and that's part of the reason for my book is I wanted to create a rite of passage to become an elder. So as you walk through the themes of the book, as you walk through breaking through denial of aging mm-hmm. and doing a life review, and completing emotional unfinished business and spiritual unfinished business and becoming an elder and becoming an, you know, engaging in the common good and doing spiritual practice, then what happens is you can fulfill the promise of the stage of life and you can end, you can come to the end of life feeling immense gratitude and completion, a sense of completion rather than feeling regret and bitterness and uh, traumatized and, you know, heartbroken. Yeah, and so, yeah. in a way, I was trying to make an antidote for, for all of, for what you're naming as the, as the depression that's going on. Powerful. Connie, we're going to take a very, very short break, and then we're going to come back and learn more and explore more about what it means to be an elder and what it means to age beautifully and well. The cutting edge of conscious radio, Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at omtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. With happy clients all over the world, Kara Johnstad knows that your voice is the missing link to more authenticity, abundance, creativity, and health. An internationally acclaimed voice expert, Kara's breakthrough methods have helped thousands of people successfully heal their voice wounds and extinguish the story of self-doubt and shyness forever. Join in group trainings, attend online sessions, schedule one-on-one time, and invite Kara to work with your organization and community. Get started today. Go to www.karajohnstad.com and receive a special guided meditation designed to fine-tune your inner voice and welcome you on the voice journey. This is Kathy Beal, host of Celestial Compass, featuring astrology you can use. Celestial Compass points you to what's going on in the sky and what you can do with it down here on Earth. We also explore fun, effective, and cosmic tools for navigating this adventure we call life. Join me the first and third Monday of the month at 5 p.m. Eastern Time for Celestial Compass. It's enlightening, entertaining, and empowering. 
Coping 19, brought to you by CDC and the Ad Council. If you're feeling increasingly lonely right now, you're not alone. It's totally normal. Even though we may not be able to get together in person, connecting virtually with friends and family still gives you a chance to interact with people and may help raise your spirits. Join a virtual book club, set up group text chats, or online video coffee breaks with coworkers. Find more self-care and coping tips at coping-19.org. Welcome back to Voice Rising. I am your host, Cara Johnstead, and today we are talking about the inner work of age, shifting from role to soul with author Connie Zweig. And um, Connie, we are talking about, well, I guess you were talking about the difference between getting older and becoming an elder, this ability to really embrace becoming an elder. And I was I was reading your book, but there's a beautiful quote by Rabbi Zalman. Um, is his name Shachta Shal- uh, Shalomi, I believe. That's right. Uh-huh. And I would love to read it because it's it's so precious. It says, elders are the jewels of humanity that have been mined from mm-hmm. the earth, cut in the rough, then buffed and polished by the stonecutter's art into precious gems that we recognize for their enduring value and beauty, shaped with patience and love. Over decades of refinement, each facet of the jewel reflects light that awakens our soul to intimations of its own splendor. It's, it's you know, when we read this, I mean, I'm, you know, 57, so I'm, I'm moving towards the elder stage. That's the kind of languaging that we need to do exactly what you said as a as a culture and as a society to remember, to honor like all these facets, right? The patients, people that have had children, have different jobs, they have so much wisdom, they have so much to share, or we have so much to share. So what is you you created this book with a lot of steps. What tools do we have to not just grow old, but to really become an elder? I know. I love that quote, too, Kara. It's really, Mm -hmm. really exquisite. And we don't have that image in our culture of an Mm -hmm. elder as a precious jewel. Sometimes I think of elders as libraries. You know, ah, every elder. Beautiful. Yes, right? And and, and they have so, libraries in, I don't know if you know that, but like in Denmark, I'm in Berlin, Germany in the moment. They, you can, you can lend out a person or you can buy, <laughs> you can book a person for a conversation. I think that is so precious to learn oh, from their wow. story. So you can go to the uh-huh. library and then there are volunteers that are there uh-huh. and uh-huh. you can ask some That's questions. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Oh, it's they beautiful. might be older. They might be drug addicts. They might be um, teachers. They might be whatever. And they share why, uh-huh. you know, their, their life story. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, mm-hmm. you know, in the, in the States here, I'm in Los Angeles, um, we have what we call a Medicare birthday when we turn 65 mm. and get health care coverage. Yeah. And at that turning point, we're called seniors. Right. But a senior is an age, and an elder is a stage. It's Mm. not an age. Mm -hmm. So we could, you know, you could meet someone at 57 Mm -hmm. who um, has deep self-knowledge, is connected in some way to their own unconscious process, to their dreams or their creativity, is aware of their shadow issues, who is also connected to a transpersonal center, Mm -hmm. silent awareness, whatever we call it, spirit, Mm -hmm. and who is also um, holding mortality awareness, Mm -hmm. recognizing that their individuality will pass, 
whether what regardless of what they believe about life after death, I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying the awareness that our individuality um, has a shorter time horizon at 57 yeah. than it did before. And so you could have someone like that at that age who in a profound way is an elder mm-hmm. and has distilled the lessons from her life and knows, has identified her gift to offer to the world. Okay. And then you could have someone who's 85, let's say a man, who's very closed-minded and black and white thinker, Mm -hmm. who's emotionally rigid and feels a lot of bitterness, who feels regret about his choices, who doesn't have much self-awareness or connection um, to spirit. So he's 85, but he's not an elder. Mm -hmm. And so there's a developmental process in humanity. And there are very clear stages of development, which I outline in the book based on Ken Wilber's integral philosophy. So from my point of view, elder is a stage of development emotional, cognitive, moral, and spiritual development. Mm -hmm. So how do we attain that if we're interested, if we're moving past midlife and we're moving into, you know, this new arena, if we're facing retirement or we've already retired from paid work. um, If we're retire. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's, I mean that's, if you're an artist like I am, you might love your work so much that you you might just already have that so balance. Let's, yeah. let's, let's pick that up. Let's drop that thread for a moment and pick it up. So um, if you're in these various transitions, if you have a serious illness, mm-hmm. if you recently faced a loss, an emotional loss, and you're in these transitions, then what does it mean for you to kind of take, Take on your own development now to become an elder. So for me, um, what I wrote about is that there are critical pieces to this. Um, And everyone is individual and everyone can do this differently at their own pace. But you asked me how. You asked me how do we do this. So for me, the first step is breaking through denial. Hmm. So I um, have an 89-year-old friend who said to me, I don't want to be with those old people. I'm not like them. Mm -hmm. So at 89, that's an expression of denial and a Mm -hmm. projection onto those people, Mm -hmm. right? He's not like them. He's still young. So if we're living with denial of our age, then we have a shadow character that I call the inner ageist. And if we don't work with that inner ageist and um, become conscious of that part of ourselves that's not self-accepting, that may even be Mm self-loathing, that's internalized all the messaging from the media about young is good and old is bad, then we're not going to take even the first step if we don't break through that denial. And then retirement is also a call to Mm -hmm. the inner work of age. And um, it may mean stopping work or changing the way that we work. It Mm -hmm. may mean continuing work in the way that you're describing. Mm -hmm. But what I'm suggesting is that Becoming an elder is a quality of awareness. It's a stage, remember? It's internal. And so if we work, if we continue to work um, as we did in midlife, driving and pushing and driving ourselves with the ego's agenda, then we're not becoming an elder. Yeah. But if we shift gears and we work and whatever it is, or volunteer or do grandparenting or do creativity with an elder's quality of awareness, with the long view of our lives and 
the gratitude for our lives and the interconnectedness with everything and a lack of attachment to the outcome of what we're doing, then we can continue to do um, with an elder's awareness. And so I go through these various tools in the book. Each chapter has a series of practices at the end. So you learn how to do a life review of your lived life and your unlived life in the shadow that we were talking about, Mm -hmm. how to do emotional repair with your loved Mm -hmm. ones, how to do creative repair. We were talking about reclaiming your creativity, Right. how to do spiritual repair and re-examine your beliefs Mm -hmm. um, in God, in spirit, in the divine, whatever we call it. And, how to then make this shift from midlife hero to late life elder mm-hmm. and really and reimagine for yourself what it means to become an elder. So for some people, this is about spirituality and it means picking up some kind of contemplative practice. I interviewed many spiritual teachers from many traditions in the book. Um, Father Thomas Keating, just before he died, Ken Wilbur, Rabbi Rami Shapiro, Krishna Das, Anna Douglas, Buddhist teacher, Roshi Wendy Nakao, a Buddhist teacher. So you get these various perspectives about how they are aging and doing spiritual practice. And for others, it's about activism and the call to serve. And so if, it's, if you're more of an elder activist, there's a chapter about heeding the call to serve and denying the call. And what mm-hmm. stops you? What are the inner obstacles or shadows that stop you from mm-hmm. taking this step? And yeah. then, yeah. No, I was just thinking that we're, we are grateful for some... You know, in some situations, I know that from the, the climate crisis that we have the young kids that are daring, and then a lot of times the, you know, the moms and dads, they can't always do it because they are working and maybe they can't leave work to go to a protest. So then the grandmas and the grandpas are, they, they know that if they're arrested, it's not going to affect their, um, well, their work situation, or, you know, it, right. it's, not, it's not a great thing to be arrested. It takes a lot of courage and a lot of bravery. Um, but there are some very courageous uh, protesters when they're getting older, standing up against, um, yeah, nuclear waste or, you know. Yeah. All, so all for our li- there. Yeah. yeah. So for our listeners, Um, Elders Climate Action is an online group. Elders Action Network, they're connected, Mm -hmm. is an online group of people who are very involved in social justice causes. Mm -hmm. Bill McKibben, who founded 350.org and the divestment movement, is now focused totally on elders and climate action with a new group called thirdact.org. And, you know, because everything's online, it's international, you can connect with these great communities. And so if that's your calling now to go take your inner work and your gift and give it to the common good, humanity is so in need of this now. There's so much suffering and we're such in need of the moral voice of the elder and the spiritual voice of the elder. And so if that's your calling, um, there are a lot of ways to do that now and to find community, to find your tribe and people you can talk to about these things. In, in the world of psychology, there's an international group called the Climate Psychology Alliance mm-hmm. um, where psychologists are now training people to um, work with men- the mental health of patients who are suffering from climate anxiety, for example. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I don't know your listeners, but I'm just kind of throwing out different options to see if you, something, um, yeah. Well, you know, I was going to say, you also talk in your, I mean, your book is, is very, you know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of depth there. Um, but you also talk about the creative, uh, the conscious creative 
moments. People like, uh, let's say, Leonard Cohen, who is still on stage at, at 78 sharing his gifts. People that are yes. still, you know, I would say Jane Fonda is, you know, still working, still sharing her yes. vision. Um, yes. So this, you know, I, I want to get to this, I guess, because it's voice rising, and this is my passion, is that, you know, we have this powerful instrument that does keep us healthy and it just seems like so much of the work that we are asked to do has to do with tuning into our inner voice or listening to the whisperings of our soul whether it's journaling or storytelling or chanting or writing you know it it for me when i when i see these things it's it's really empowering to think about all of us no matter what age to have the mortality consciousness that you talk about and to write a life review. It doesn't matter if we're, it's probably more difficult when we're 20, but this, this understanding how precious this time is, our earth time, and that it is not forever this identity, put it like that, you know, whatever happens afterwards, <laughs> there are different thoughts. And it can bring such awareness to our lives that you know maybe those little squabbles are not as important anymore or maybe we let go of jobs that where we feel that they're abusive quicker because we do honor or realize our self-worth yes that's beautifully put and that's and right that, that's what i hey we're going to take a short break but but uh yeah, the book has a lot of golden nuggets. So let's take a short break and we'll be back with Connie Zweig with more on her new book, The Inner Work of Age. Bringing a more conscious lifestyle to your world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. The United States has the highest rate of incarceration in the world. At the Equal Justice Initiative, we believe mass incarceration has to end. There is this presumption of dangerousness and guilt that gets assigned to black and brown people. We have to confront our history of racial injustice and commit to a new era of truth. There's something better waiting for us, something that feels more like freedom. Truth can inspire change. Please learn more at EJI.org. Welcome back to Voice Rising. I am your host, Cara Johnstad, and we are talking today about the inner work of age, shifting from role to soul with author Connie Zweig, who's with me today live. Um, Connie, you were, you were talking, well, I guess in your book, I'm, I'm fascinated with voice, and we know from our own experience with family that sometimes the older we get, the more we feel the necessity to talk about our past. And the great um, philosopher Kierkegaard said, we live life forward, but understand it backwards. And you had written in your book that a lot of times when people were just repeating their stories, that people thought they were senile, but that you've come to understand the importance of this work, of making sense of our lives through storytelling. So why are telling our life stories so important? Why should we all practice deeper listening when an elder or an older person is sharing their life? 
Well, <clears throat> I think there are a few reasons for this. Um, sometimes we see people doing this repetitively and kind of unconsciously. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, there's a stereotype that that person is stuck in the past and can't be present and um, maybe having cognitive issues. Mm -hmm. But what's now understood is that that person is trying to make sense, make meaning of their life story. They're trying to make meaning of it by, you know, verbally expressing it and digesting it. Mm -hmm. And so part of the... Um, tool of life review and doing it in a specific way with writing in a specific form is to help people do that intentionally rather than unintentionally. You know, you've heard um, people who have near-death experiences, sometimes their life passes before them. Mm -hmm. So, or people have dreams in which their past and their story kind of unfolds. So there's something in the psyche that naturally wants to digest our experiences and distill the lessons from them and make the meaning. And so if we take the time now at this stage of life to do that with intention, with design, it can be very... um, Creative, it can be very productive in the sense of um, fulfilling. I'll tell you what happened for me. I'm a person who's not very oriented to the past. I'm, I'm much more naturally oriented to the future, and so I kind of resisted doing my life review. Mm-hmm. But once I got into it, what I saw was that my four careers, which I thought were totally distinct separate careers, actually all had the same mission, which I call the soul's mission. And for me, I was a meditation teacher and then a journalist and then a therapist um, and a writer. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was all about transmitting information about consciousness. Mm-hmm. And I didn't see that common thread until I had the whole tapestry of the life review. Yeah. So when you mentioned, you know, people doing it in their 20s, it's a whole different thing, Kara. It's not really, it doesn't really serve the same purpose. As Kierkegaard said, we can only see it backward. Yeah, yeah. So when we see it now from the long view in our 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, we can make a kind of meaning that is very deeply gratifying. You talk about also, we've we've talked about today in the show, rites of passage, and we know that there are baptisms and bar mitzvahs and weddings and graduations and everything possible, but there's no, there's no really community ceremony for crossing into this role of being an elder, what do you imagine? Like if you could let your fantasy run wild, you know, we have the weddings. Would it be I'm going to marry my soul kind of thing? Like I'm I'm going to, like how can we create a ceremony that would really honor not only the person's life but also where they're going, where they're, yeah, where they're growing towards or their commitments or their vows that are, that they're taking. Um, so the book is set up so that you can do that kind of inner work as a rite of passage. Mm -hmm. For me, um, before I wrote the book, I found Saging International, Mm -hmm. S-A-G-E hyphen I-N-G, saging.org. And they have a year-long training to become a sage, uh, which I took, which I found really beautiful and gratifying. Mm -hmm. Um, And it didn't include the unconscious process, which for me is so important. And that's kind of why I wrote the book for that, to include that missing piece of the shadow. Um, You know, there are rites of passage in indigenous cultures, And many people are connected 
now with the Native world and might be able to find rites of passage there. But you can also create this for yourself. So I'll give you an example. When I retired from clinical work, I created a rite of passage for myself. Um, I surrounded myself um, in candlelight with some friends and colleagues. Mm -hmm. And I held um, in my hands my, my six books and my um and something to represent my clients and i spoke about how i had touched the lives of many people and most of whom i will never know i will never know you know how their lives unfolded by um their con- by their finding my work and um i felt a lot of gratitude and a sense of completion with that cycle of my life. And so I put all of that down. I emptied my hands. And then I stepped across a silver threshold in the floor that I had made. Mm -hmm. And I crossed over empty-handed into um, the next stage of life. Mm -hmm. And felt a kind of wonder. What would it be like? So that's a retirement ritual that, you know, could be adapted to an elder ritual. Mm -hmm. Your question about connecting with soul is such a good one. So the subtitle of the book is Shifting from Role to Soul. Yes. And by that I mean really deeply shifting our identity from what we do to who we really are our essential spiritual nature. And if you don't like the word soul, you can call it whatever works for you. Spirit or higher self or Buddha but it, nature. But it, it rhymes very beautifully, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, so, but, why not keep it? It's poetry. <laughs> yes, but some people have trouble with language. Yeah, so okay. so the, the, the idea is, as we become an elder... We, there's a lot of letting go. So there's three stages to a rite of passage. We let go, we step into the unknown, and we emerge renewed, just like I did in my retirement ritual. I let go of my work and my accomplishments. I stepped into the unknown, and I crossed the threshold. And so as an elder, you can imagine for yourself that kind of thing. If you want the spiritual transition from role to soul and you want to begin to embody this deeper spiritual identity, then you want to find a practice. You want to find a lineage. You want to find a community, maybe a teacher. And you want to begin practicing this contemplation from role to soul. There are many pra- spiritual practices in my book for both both beginners and advanced pr- practitioners so that you can begin to do this work. Um, and then you become a spiritual elder. And that's really an attainment, you know, because that's a whole new stage of life. That's living in the recognition of non-duality, that we're all that, We're all soul. We're all consciousness. We're all awareness. Whatever it is you call it, we're all spirit. And as we begin to live our lives from that stage of awareness, we behave differently. We feel differently. A kind of compassion arises in us and a generosity arises in us because we're connected to everything. Mm Mm-hmm. We're not living in that isolation that I spoke about before. We're living in that union. And, you know, then you relate to people as a soul. How do I live as a soul? How do I relate to my husband as a soul? That's a different kind of life than a conventional life, and especially a busy life that's identified with doing, right? Yeah. So and there are being. all these opportunities. Yeah. So and there are many, many opportunities 
available to us now because all of the world's mystical traditions have been democratized. It's all out there. Mm -hmm. If you're a Christian, you can find a mystical practice or Jewish or Buddhist or Hindu or Muslim. You can find mystical practices now and really begin to make, to turn your attention from role to soul. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You always work a lot with including meditation and I love it. I, I meditate a lot, many hours a day. I'm meditating. Uh-huh. It keeps me, keeps me well, but I did want to ask you your experience, I guess quickly, because we're coming to a close, but in the beginning we talked about the unconscious and the idea of anger or, or, or you know, grief sometimes being um, put aside, and nowadays you might even say spiritually bypass. What is your, there are a lot of spiritual traditions that don't really embrace, you know, they want to be the watcher, the observer, right? And sometimes this is good. We we don't want, you know, we, sometimes it's good to count to 10 before we maybe do something silly. But sometimes we have to feel these deep, wild, fierce, illogical, crazy, passionate parts of our being. So what is your experience on integrating meditation without spiritually bypassing these deeper illogical layers and really being able to integrate them. Um, So whenever I taught shadow work, I always taught it with meditation. Mm -hmm. Because if we're going to face the shadow, and whatever that is for us, um, maybe it's our anger or grief, maybe it's our fear of age or our fear of death, or um, maybe it's disliking the way our body looks, or maybe it's projected and disliking somebody else or another group. Whatever it is, if we're going to face those um, charged, unconscious areas of ourselves, we need a silent center. Mm -hmm. We need a refuge. And meditation gives us that place where we can sit and watch the mind do its dance, right? And watch Mm -hmm. the feelings come and go. And so for me, um, I've joined those practices so that we can watch those difficult feelings come and go and then come out of meditation and we can explore them with shadow work. Yeah, yeah. So what is that anger about? Who is that angry part of me? It's not who I am. Right? right? I'm a soul. I'm pure awareness. I'm consciousness. So it's not who I am. It's a part of my shadow. I'm going to call it the angry shadow character. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. I have a whole method in my book for working with that shadow character that carries the anger from my childhood so that it's not bypassed. It carries right. intelligence that carries, there's reason, there's valid feelings, there's um, meaning there to be discovered. And at the same time, we don't want to be overwhelmed and taken over by it. Mm -hmm. And so we meditate. We meditate in order to return to the silent center. Yeah. Beautiful, Connie. Uh, It's it's simply a blessing to have one of yeah the possibility of having this work out there for all of us that have aging parents or we're aging or we want to have a culture that embraces the elders or you yes. know, as we also grow older i really thank you for taking the time to feel the nudge to listen to your soul's whisper and to put your experience and your thoughts on paper. And like you said, you know, you're touching many, many people around the world. You might not know who you're touching because it's being read in, in kitchens and in cafes and in bedrooms, but you are touching and changing and writing the new story that we are moving towards. So I thank you for being here. Thank you, with Kara. Us today. One quick thing. Yes. So my my email is Connie Zweig at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. If our listeners are interested in reading the book in community with other people, we're, we have about 40 wisdom circles now of people online um, reading together and doing the practices together and aging in community. So that if you're interested so in that. Powerful. Yeah. Tommy Zweig so, at gmail.com. So Z-W-E-I-G. Exactly. And please put Wisdom Circle in the subject line so I catch it right away. Kara, this Wisdom was wonderful. Circle. I fully, yeah. I fully enjoyed our time together, Kara. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All the best to you. All Bye. the best. Big hug. Bye-bye.